at the end of the day, the goal is high force production with low body weight. And all of those compounds accomplish that goal very well. What's up guys, Derek, moreplacemartis.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about Scott Adkins' body transformation for Undisputed and what I think he probably took to prepare for that role. So clearly Scott has taken training seriously his entire life. There really isn't a point where he wasn't completely immersed in this kind of quest to become a, I don't know, I guess a fight you know, movie star. I don't even know what you categorize them at, but you know, like an action hero star in regards to martial arts in particular. And you hear him talk about when he first got into this stuff. But when I first watched Bloodsport when I was 12 years old, I remember that being the day that I said to my mother, Mommy, Mommy, I know what I want to do with my life. And she was like, What? I want to do what that guy does, Jean Claude Van Damme. Just live in the gym. Simple as that. The thing about me is I enjoy to train. I miss it if I don't do it. So I'm in the gym every day. Get in the gym for at least. 40 minutes every day so as you've heard he's wanted to be like jean-claude van damme since a very young age he's in the gym every single day so we can assume that this guy's been training pretty much non-stop throughout his entire career so once you peak as a natural that really happens within the first few years of perfect diet and training realistically like sure you can get some negligible gains after that you know an extra milk out another one to two to three percent per year but once you've achieved the majority of your newbie gains in the first year and then the consecutive or the subsequent years years two three maybe four and five to a much lesser extent you pretty much maxed out and we already know he's been training for the entirety of his life with probably the same level of adherence and dedication for or the significant majority for most of these movie roles and going back to his first notable role well, it's not notable necessarily but it's his uh the first role we get kind of a look at what his physique looks like is in extreme challenge in 2001 so apparently he's 25 years old here and here you can see lean athletic looking guy but nothing crazy nothing that would make you ask what's this guy taking what's he on or even does any level of significant level of performance enhancement like in this scene here he just looks like a regular really athletic fit guy like there's nothing really crazy about his arms his build in general he looks like he's probably i don't know 185 pounds 190 pounds at most with not diced not jacked nothing really out of the ordinary and then moving Moving forward to 2006 in Undisputed 2, this is where we got the first look at Scott Adkins' physique looking completely different than we'd seen previously in at least the first movie that I noted. So his physique is far more muscular and far leaner in contrast to what would appear to somebody with a skewed body building perception like myself as what was closer to skinny fat in the 2001 role, to be honest. Obviously to the average person, that's just athletic, mildly lean, but to me that's like, and a lot of people who watch this channel, he wasn't really more than skinny fat from what I can see in this first role here in 2001. Maybe he was closer to 10% than I can see, but here he looks almost like 15%-ish with no crazy level of muscularity. And then moving to Undisputed 2, it's just all of a sudden there's visible abs. He's packed on a significant amount of weight. His traps are popping like crazy. There's just head, like red flags all over the place of gear use. And as far as how his physique progressed from 2006, he's had a few roles where he looked very, very impressive since then. Like that was 13, almost 14 years ago now. But since then, he's had a few other roles that are notable as well. I think that was more or less where his physique looked peaked, in my opinion, although he did have a role shortly thereafter in a 2009 movie called Ninja, where he looked a bit leaner, in my opinion. Perhaps it was just the angles and the fact that he was flexing certain ways in certain uh, clips. It's hard to say, but he does look a bit leaner in this movie than he did in Undisputed 2. However, it looks like he's dropped maybe 10 to 15 pounds in this movie, maybe even more. A lot of that, I believe, is just intermittent muscular nitrogen, glycogen, blood volume, a lot related to his choice of anabolics probably at the end of the day. And then moving forward to Undisputed 3, he takes on a similar look to what he did in Undisputed 2, although a bit more downsized in my opinion. He looks like he's lost muscle here. He also looks softer. And then moving forward to Undisputed 4, 
or I guess this is, uh, it's called Boyka Undisputed from 2016. It looks like his physique has gotten sort of to a middle ground between Undisputed 3 and Undisputed 2, with Undisputed 2, in my opinion, being his peak physique. So that's more or less what we're going to kind of elaborate on here. So looking at his physique in Undisputed 2, is this achievable naturally for him? No, I don't think so. He's obviously genetically gifted and he's extremely athletic, extremely uh, got a lot of talents and he's able to do all these crazy acrobatic moves, even holding this much muscle. And the thing is, is when it comes to his drug choice in particular, just assuming he took something to begin with, because obviously I can't prove anything. I'm just speculating based on his physique progression, kind of red flags I see with certain marks on his physique. What do I think he took in particular? I think for Undisputed 2, he's holding a very volume kind of look that's pretty indicative of testosterone use, in my opinion. But on top of that, if you're a martial artist and you're an athlete, are you going to load yourself up with something like a 19 nor or another testosterone derivative like an eq or a d ball that's going to crank your estrogen even higher and then cause water bloating issues and load you up with unnecessary weight no you're going to use something that gives you high force production with low body weight like at the end of the day to stay athletic the goal is not to get as big as possible because at the end of the day it's going to inhibit endurance inhibit flexibility inhibit athleticism in general so you're not going to choose a 19 nor like nandrolone you're not going to choose something like d-ball you're not going to choose something like anadrol you're going to look at your traditional dht derivatives on top of a test base in my opinion and based on his physique the first thing i can see at least what i believe i see is indicative of testosterone use in terms of his bulked up a bit more glycogen loaded look but as far as what else i think he probably took on top of that if it wasn't just a testosterone on itself it was probably a dht derivative like an anivar a winstrol a masteron or a primabolin and as far as which of those he took in particular it's kind of just speculation at that point but at the end of the day the goal is high force production with low body weight and all of those compounds accomplish that goal very well there's a reason why 100 meter sprinters uh, fighters all these guys in kind of athletic sports that would require maximizing the capability of your body at as low of a body weight as possible and maximizing just muscular output in terms of like I said, force production at low body weight, that would be accomplished by DHT derivative that's not going to log you and crank you up to like an extra 20 pounds within, you know, a few, a couple months just by the sheer mechanism of action of the drug in order to, like a lot of these drugs, the way they work is they're seen as bulking drugs, not the DHT derivatives, but things like Nandrolone, things like D-Ball. A lot of these things are seen as bulking drugs, not because of their inherent ability to retain more nitrogen Rather, it's their side effect profile that leads people to believe they're gaining more muscle from it. But when in reality, they're just seeing the side effects and believing, perceiving those to be beneficial. When in reality, it's just temporary water, temporary blood volume, temporary whatever. They don't actually equate to a significant amount of increased nitrogen retention than something like a Primo or something like a Anavar. And in a lot of the clinical data, you can actually see that at the end of the day, most of these steroids accomplish the same thing. It's just the way by which they do it and their side effect profile is what differs fairly significantly. So I believe he probably used something like a testosterone base with a Masteron or a Prima Bolin for his roles in Undisputed 2, probably. I'd venture to guess he probably did the same thing in uh, Undisputed 3 and 4. He's older, obviously, so it's harder to achieve the same look as you get older, regardless of your drug use. But I think for Undisputed 2, it was probably a test with a DHT derivative like Masteron or Prima Bolin, if not just a testosterone-based monotherapy, if you will. At the end of the day, in the Anabolics family, aside from maximizing performance with a relative lack of cranking up body weight the dht derivatives and dht in itself are mainly beneficial not just for what i mentioned already but in addition to that their effect on motor learning and neurology like these drugs are the ones that are going to increase mental acuity motivation can be aggression too can be a lot of things that are beneficial in a athletic kind of context especially where you're trying to aim and you're trying to use depth perception all these kind of things that are less relevant for somebody who just walks in the gym five days a week and tries to pack on a maximum amount of lean tissue for somebody who's in an athletic sport where you have to 
to kick guys in the head and do spinning back turns where you still hit the guy in the head and aim as accurately as possible. And you need that neurological support as much as possible. DHT derivatives are a no-brainer. And at the end of the day, when it comes to athletics, they are far superior to most other drug choices when it comes to driving that pathway and improving cognitive outcomes in a performance context, having those sharp reflexes that are going to be beneficial in athletics in general, not just martial arts, but especially in martial arts. And in conjunction with the increased amount of force production with the relative lack of increasing body weight, the DHT derivative family is, with the exception of anandrol, of course, which more or less just acts as a 19 or in its mechanism of action. But in general, the DHT derivatives in conjunction with a testosterone base for that physiologic estrogen is what I would see as the most beneficial and, you know, likely choice for somebody like Scott Adkins based on his physique and based on what he is trying to accomplish for his personal goals. So take from that what you will. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you think he took something else? Do you think he's natural? When do you think he hopped on the gear or not? I'd be interested to see where you think his physique started showing the flagship signs of AAS use, if at all. Also drop a like. It helps the algorithm. Much appreciated when you guys do that. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, at moreplates underscore more dates. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.